The rarest subtype of Pemphigus vulgaris is Pemphigus vegetans, accounting for around 1-2% to of cases of Pemphigus vulgaris. It is less serious than Pemphigus vulgaris and it occurs in patients with increased resistance to the disease and it is characterised, as the name in, implies, by localised verrucous vegetations. And Pemphigus vegetans affects the skin folds, that's the intertriginous areas such as the groins and axillae and it also affects the oral mucosa and can affect the face and scalp. There are two subtypes of Pemphigus vegetans. The most common type is the Newman type and this type begins and ends as Pemphigus vulgaris. So the early lesions are similar to Pemphigus vulgaris and the lesions differ in that they fully develop into vegetating masses. The other type and less common type is the Halepau variant and in this type the lesions arise on normal skin with pustules not bully and the lesions are characterised by an eosinophilic infiltrate in the epidermis and dermis. The histological features of Pemphigus vegetans are hyperkeratosis, papillomatosis, acanthosis and pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia and within the epidermis there are abscesses and this is a diagnostic feature of Pemphigus vegetans. This is an early lesion in Pemphigus vegetans showing a suprabasal cleft or bulla. And in this biopsy from a patient with Pemphigus vegetans there is a, an inflammatory infiltrate composed of eosinophil polymorphs in the upper dermis and within the epidermis is an abscess composed of eosinophil polymorphs. And here is another biopsy from a lesion of Pemphigus vegetans. You can see that there is florid acanthosis with pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia and as we descend there is, an, in fact there are a couple of intraepidermal abscesses so characteristic of Pemphigus vegetans. Yeah.